And then, yeah, I guess it was just it was just a delay thing. I guess now you should be able to reboot and go. Yeah, there we go. Now we're back on. Fantastic. Woo! It's not loading we're up. Live. Not loading up for me. But uh yeah, I think that's just a JTV issue. But <laughs> yeah, I see that you made one for me. I'm not the medic dude, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. The, the oh, nursing the, school dropout? No, 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 no. I'm not having that's, any of that. that. That's what I found so great about that. It, 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 I, I thought he was. I thought he did that um, for me as a, just a you know put. He was going to put your name on the medic girl. So right. I, that, that, I, I found that to be a very, very good, uh, <laughs> very, very good. Um, you know, a piece of fan art right there. Oh no, I love it. I, the Thor fan gave me the the um, the tanks and the and the, oh, there we go. Yes, now we have video. Just finally came back live. Fantastic. So, all right, guys, we're gonna get moved in, and uh, I'm I'm kind of over trying to. You know, we'll, we'll get back to it after this. But it's been a, a crappy day, man. So far as everything we've been trying to do. So let's just get into some StarCraft action. Do what we can to enjoy that. That's all I care about at this moment. That's, uh, that's all we really need to care about, some, some great StarCraft action here. You see on the lower right-hand corner here on Belshire Beach is going to be our uh, purpley, proton, uh, purpley, proton, purpley Zerg uh, search, and up in the upper left-hand spawning area is going to be Ham with the brushed, I guess, brushed purple? I <laughs> know what you call the, brushed the red, right? Brushed red. The, the, br the brushed red, the pink, uh, and I've up got here to turn, with our Tammy uh, the Heron. And I've got to turn. T Tammy the Heron, Tammy the Terran. There we go. Turn our sound on as well, because I was laddering a little bit earlier today and not doing well. Anyway, yes, Hammy taking on search here at Belshire Beach. Belshire Beach, by the way, is going to be getting a lot more play and a lot more exposure with the expanded GSTL um, that's going to be launching, if I'm not mistaken, in the next two days. I think it launches very, very soon. So if you haven't gone over to, G uh, to GOMTV.net, make sure you head over there. And uh, the $25 asking price. To sign up for one month at that GSTL definitely worth it. Search immediately going to be getting aggressive, taking this the second hatch all the way down to the third position. Hoping he hide it for a while. We see Hammy had the little proxy racks out, but that's not going to be going over so well. Having to float that now, going to drop it back down and try and get a tech lab up on it. And uh, favoring a tech lab this early in a TVZ, that's a little weird to me there, Red Mage, because the natural response of any Zerg player under aggression is almost always going to be. To, to go with Zerglings, to try to get Speedlings uh, plus Queen plus Creep Spread and do what they can there. So we're going to see a Reaper, actually. So it uh, looks like he wants to go for a little Reaper abuse, and I like this build. I, I, I do like the build. I don't know if I would have if I would have gone with the proxy with the Reaper that uh, that close. For something right. that, that close, you usually want to go with Marauders because they move slower, or for Marines. Now, he did this in the last game when he was on Zelnaga Caverns. Uh, in my... my Memory's already bad versus one holding uh, between I believe it was a uh, uh, Athene or uh, Tekken, right? Uh, between right. Tekken and uh, and he had put it right outside and he had, he had tried to do a little bit of a Marauder rush and that got turned around pretty pretty quickly. But he, he managed to of course get through the game right and uh, and and wind up here. But yeah, he was he was favoring the, the those Marauders and I guess he's just trying to favor that 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 early tech. But yeah, I, I would have <laughs> favored gone getting for, his uh, Reaper killed for no reason. Yeah, getting that, yeah, <laughs> getting the Reaper you know annihilated there. But yeah, I totally would have gone with you know either. A, a reactor marine or just churned out you know a, a couple of marines or you know or, or put it you know honestly he could have put it back in the gold and then lifted those uh, reapers right up and gone right into the mineral line well i'll tell you what, what way easier oh yeah I, i'm forced well it's I, I think what he's mainly going for here is to block the expansion and delay the expansion on another map this would actually be brilliant i can see this working very well on a zelnaga caverns because as of right now we see that there's no expansion here and if he had tried to put any expansion there, you know, he'd be easily harassed. We could even use the barracks as kind of a little meat shield to dance around and to try and do some damage. Problem is, on Belshire Beach, so very easy to take this third. It's not even that much further away uh, from the main. So, and he, you could actually get a creep spread there without ever even filling in this middle hatchery if you had to. So now he's going to use the barracks. He's going to spot the roach ward. He knows he's going to have roaches on the way to deal with, and he's trying to expand behind it. So um, I like the idea of, of using early pressure to expand, especially if that pressure can delay an expansion out of your Zerg opponent, but really just not the best executed little push here as Command Center completes. But, I mean, really as wide open as Belshire Beach is, as soon as he tries to move out, he's going to be wide open for abuse. We already see the Zerglings beginning to mass down here at the gold. 
Oh yeah, you can see a, a lot of stuff going on right there. I went ahead and posted the uh, the remaining list of the King of the Hill right there in the okay. chat for uh, for you guys and girls. So that way, if you uh, if you haven't seen the list, we are of course, unfortunately, a couple of games in already uh, with uh, the slight delays that we had. So, but we still have some some really great uh, you know Starcraft action going on here. And of course, we'll we'll be posting the replays. Uh, or I'll be posting the replays of these uh, on the site here right after we're done. The replay section is now up and running, which is fantastic. So now you can go in and post all of your replays that you want everybody to see for the community for the StarCraft 2. I think we're even trying to get it out there for, for uh, Heroes of New Earth and League of Legends. I don't know if those are up, so don't quote me on that just yet. Well, I actually... Max Integration got that up and running. So. Oh, yeah. I, I actually had a, a very nice a very nice meeting with... Uh, the team captain of our League of Legends team, and our League of Legends team is kind of badass, man. I don't know, it's you know the, the the StarCraft team has gotten so much play. Our League of Legends team is actually pretty pretty awesome, and uh, we're going to be having actually going to be trying to start streaming them at some point. We'll be bringing you more details about that, but um, but yeah, we've got a very good like one of the best in the country League of Legends team without a doubt. So the Hellion's going to move in now. And it looks like Hammy's going to go to work on the on the line here. The Roaches are a bit out of position. Not a bit out of position. Way out of position. Are you kidding me? He's going to get every single drone. And this is just terrible news for Search. Not sure what he was thinking. He had Roaches on the field. But they're nowhere to be found at the moment. There's not a single drone mining now. If we go to the income tab, we can see nine harvesters to the 21. Now all the Roaches make it back, but way after the damage is done. And uh, Hammy can even just dance around and run out of here. He's got to be suspecting at this point that there's got to be an expansion hidden somewhere. Uh, the fact that there's yet to be a second hatch put down here, uh, he has to know for him to have that many roaches. There's no way he's been doing that off of one base at this point in the game. So, And this third right now is almost completely undefended, just one queen in a very wide open area. So Hammy kind of uh, letting the mental side of things slip a little bit. Um, just in his unit county, he should be able to, to have the game sense to know that that third hatch is down. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got to know there is something out there, yeah, and uh, I'm right there with you. Search really needs to start expanding some more creep, things like that, especially with those roaches. You know, they, they're just kind of hobbling now in the middle, and uh, they just need something more to, to go. And that, that is that's something you see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Zerg do when they're not familiar with the map. They don't spread the creep enough uh, because they're focused so much on their army, and really that, that should be like the first thing in your mind is, well, I don't know the map, but let me spread the creep. Right, exactly. The roach is trying to, to poke in a little bit here. And uh, not doing the, that good of a job. There's there's a Marauder out. The Hellions, Hellions, even without Blue Flame, they do they kind of handle Roaches in a in a moderate manner. They don't do a ton of damage, but in a high enough number, the splash damage begins to mount. And these tanks were trapped here uh, by this poor factory, so he had to lift it up to let him down. Don't know if he's going to move that. Nope, just going to drop it back down. This is one of the things I do hate about Belshire Beach. Anytime you try and do a block with just a barracks or a factory, then a supply depot, tanks actually can't fit out of here. So. Just something to keep in mind the next time you guys find yourselves on this map. But Roach is trying to take down the destructible rocks here. A little bit of wasted APM, I should say. I guess just trying to use his extra APM. And now here comes a very scary push out of Hammy. Leading out with two tanks, a handful of Marauders, some SCVs, and this somewhat decent Hellion count. Sitting on about six Hellions, so... If he all he has to do is poke up right up here on this on this little outcropping and, and see this third, and the third's not going to have any chance to be defended, at least not in the near future. The Roach is way out of position. Nope, instead he's going to beeline directly for the natural expansion again, the bunker already in place, about halfway done. Now the Hellion's going to lead the way again. The uh, Roach is trying to pick their moment. A little bit of a late siege there by Hammy, so the Roaches get in very close, begin target firing down the tanks. They're going to get both tanks. Without much of an issue, more roaches being rallied in from the main now. The Hellions make their way into the drone line. Not a ton of drones to be cleaned up, though so much damage was done earlier. Continuing to roast away at the Zerg. And it looks like, yeah, Hammy's going to be able to, to do a little bit of damage and run back out. But the roach count's still rather high for Search. And uh, really, I hate to criticize him, but at this point, okay, is he finally? No, he's not going to spot the third. This third has been there. From nearly the beginning of the game, this was honestly like a, a almost a hatch first third uh, that was down there. It came up even before the spawning pool was completed, but a Hammy has not been active enough on the map to know that it's there. And really, that's what's costing him right now because he's ahead, but I think he thinks he's a lot further ahead than he actually is. And the roach count just keeps getting bigger here, Red Mage. 
Yeah, you know, and that that's something very, very deadly right there. If uh, you know, in especially him, he should should start to, to come, you know, to a, a sense that he's got to have a macro hatch somewhere. There's got to be an expansion somewhere. There's no way he should be able to have this many units out after I keep destroying this. Uh, after I keep destroying all these, there's no way that he had this much larva banked up. Right. So surge continuing to pressure back now. The zerglings leading the way. Not the biggest fan of that. Cleaned up very easily by the hellions and the marines. Now the tanks in a good position. And it looks like Surge, yeah, this is a very, yeah, that was a very ill-advised attack, and it's going to force the GG. So Hammy going to advance. That's his second win, right? That is his second win right All there. Right. So he's the first one to actually get on a uh, get on a streak there. So we're going to find out what map he wants to go for next, and uh, we'll see where we're going to be going on that one. Excellent. I'm AC, that's Red Maze GR, and this is our IG King of the Hill number 12, brought to you by Exclusive.com, and, of course, brought to you by our lovely sponsors, Steel Series Cyberground.us, Max Integration, and San Yamabushi Jiu Jitsu in combination Goju Ryu School of Self Defense. You can find them at San Yamabushi Goju.com. So hopefully, as of right now, everything's running as planned. Justin TV's being cooperative. Finally, get a chance to look in the chat and see it. Hey guys, how's it going? Want to say hi to all the people hanging out with us as always. Interiorism, Divasion, DK Sud, Fire Mix, Mumbles of Life, Search 799, Shake Master 52, SKS Storm, Thorfan, and Tally, as among others. So thanks for being here with us, guys. Thanks for being patient when we worked out all of our stream issues. So, uh, yeah, just continuing to poke through. It looks like Tally. Yes, I saw that you. Uh, I, I see you're right there, my friend. Unfortunately, again, I'm not the medic fan. I think it's awesome. I like the way. I love the way you did my name and all the graphic art and stuff. But I'm the Banshee guy, man. You can't be throwing my name on anything with the the uh, the nursing school dropout. I'm just not acceptable. That's all Red Mage's thing, you know. Although I really like the smoke effects that, that you put all over it, this is uh, definitely definitely pretty cool. I right? No, like, I, I love like it. Like that style, yeah, very very. Just need a banshee well. chicken there, man. Throw a banshee yes. chicken there, and I'm a happy camper. <laughs> all right, so moving into our next game, going to be Hammy taking on Deadly Craft. Deadly Craft, a good buddy of ours that we've gotten to know very very recently. A very dangerous Terran player. Um, what's Hammy? I know. I'm saying what's Hammy bitching about in the chat? <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, Nothing. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> no. It was something from from way earlier. Uh. Prior to the prior to the start. All right. Stuff. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, I hope everybody's uh, having a go ahead and start. Hope everybody's <laughs> having a good Father's Day. Be you a father or a son or a daughter. Um. Either way, make sure that if you haven't by now, send your pop a message if you can. Spend a little time with him if you can. That's one of the reasons we were late today. I got a little caught up in doing the Father's Day thing. And I, I love you guys, but I'm not going to lie. Whenever, whenever it comes to that kind of thing, I kind of was okay with being late. <laughs> I just was. I kind of that, I made my peace with it. I accepted it. And I'm sorry to, to have delayed you guys. But, but yeah, you know how it is. Either way, you're going to be moving right into the action. Deadly Craft and Hammy. Well, well, we do love Papa AC, too. Mm. We, we love Papa AC. Papa AC, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, it, it's funny. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure some other people have mothers like this. But uh, for Father's Day, apparently my cat Pixel got me a card, the you know nice. a Father's Day card. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I gotta love cheesy family members. They make things a lot more fun. Moving into the action, Deadly Craft. Our blue Terran going to be spawning roughly that 12 o'clock position. And down at the South Hammy, our two-time defending champ right now, the Prince in Waiting in the pink, spawning down at the bottom. And heart to IG, says Deadly Craft. Less than three to you, Deadly Craft. We love you, brother. And um, But yeah, Test Bug. Test Bug's really a map that's been gaining a lot of popularity. A lot more people are beginning to use it in their tournament systems. A lot more uh, large organizations, MLG, of course, the... the the organization that's leading the way with test bug as a major map but um, people are beginning to use it more I'm even starting to see more customs game games on test bug and I love that because test bug to be is just one of the best maps in our pool right now yeah it's very uh, it's a very balanced map there's a lot of room to move around there's all kinds of little ins and outs for the for the thing and it's it's just a very interesting looking map because of course it is the test bug so you've got your you've got your green then you got your you know you kind of sandy uh, you know Tundra, well, not really tundra, but you know your arid area, and then you've got your mechanical field. You know, it's it's, right. it's almost like you know, it's almost like the perfect storm. There are all kinds of cool, and it's floating in space apparently, uh, oh. which is <laughs> which is always interesting. Well, we see a proxy barracks out of Hammy now, going to be going up just on in the shadow of Deadly Craft's main base. So, going to be trying the two racks as Terran opponent. 
And uh, two racks in, in this situation, it can be very, very strong if executed properly. And uh, Deadly Craft, it, it depends on his game sense. This barracks is going down very, very late um, back at the main. So if he's, if he's on top of his game sense, he should know that this barracks should be completed by now. Um, very rarely we run into an opponent who's so bad that that barracks is actually going to go down that late uh, without it being intentional. So he's got to be expecting a little bit of pressure. And wow, another barracks here for Hammy. Immediately um, following the, uh, the the second barracks he put together, Tech Lab now going on the second barracks as well. Third barracks just about a quarter of the way done. And on back home, looks like he canceled it. Yeah, he canceled the I, barracks here. Yeah, I, I do like Deadly Craft. He knows, he knows Hammy's style there, so he's automatically sending out a Marine right there. Look behind all the mineral lines right there. He just needs to move out of his base just a little bit more, and he could easily see that Hammy's there. There you go. You can see that that he's, he's definitely like, well, he's got to be doing something, you know, because that, that's just his style. He knows, and now he sees it. This is going to be, uh, you know, th this is kind of game up right here. You know, Hammy, Hammy should just kind of pick him up and, and get him out of there before Deadly has a chance to really go in there and cream him. We see that uh, he is going to start to build a bunker right there. And even uh, if he can get that one Marine in there, oh, this, wow. this could be extremely deadly. Yep, he drops down the bunker. The SCB is going to be picked off immediately, though. And it's all going to come down to micromanagement. Who has the better micro? Two Marines here for Deadly Craft. In theory, should be able to deal with an SCV and a Marauder, but he's got to be very, very careful. The factory completes now, so is he going to try it? Oh, I don't like that. Don't be getting the tech lab. You need to be getting Hellions immediately. Now we have two Marauders dealing damage to these to these Marines. We're going to have more units rallied in. The SCV's pulled off. I like that he didn't pull too many here. He's only pulled about, uh, call it five of them. They're going to be able to chase him back, so good control there by Kraft. Not overreacting, not pulling the whole mineral line to try and deal with it, but... Um, this is the problem. You can only chase them back for so long before they hit a critical mass where they're just able to do massive damage to everything you do. And he's just about there now. Four Marauders with Concussive Shell. And he's basically treating this like a four gate. Immediately uh, target firing down the supply depots. Now Deadly Craft is supply blocked. He's only going to have two Marines able to pop out. SCV production has ceased. One tank is on the way, but tank not the best response to, to Marauder pressure. Uh, the Marauder's going to be able to deal with that pretty, pretty easily. Once, yeah, see, immediately going to be dead. Now the SCVs are pulled all off. All off going to try and get the surround. So, and really, once you hit this point, I mean, your opponent has had to sacrifice some economy to make this work, but it's not like they've had to completely sack their economy. And uh, once you have to pull all these SCVs off, the game's basically over anyway. Because, and at the, you know, how do you bounce back from having, yeah, no workers now? We go to the income tab. Yeah, one worker. And I'm sure that's the mule. GG, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Deadly Craft. So Hammy jumps out to his third win. One win away from getting a break here at the IG King of the Hill number 12. Brought to you by itsgosu.com. Absolutely right about that, AC. Go to itsgosu.com. See everything that we have lined up for you. Not just uh, StarCraft 2, but also League of Legends, Heroes of New Earth, and... Uh, um, Super Street Fighter 4, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, all kinds of really great stuff. I know that they were having a, uh, a great fighter tournament today over at Cyberground. Uh, didn't get, a, uh, didn't get a, a word back yet if that had finished up, but I, I, I know that they were playing all kinds of great stuff out there. And that's always a, uh, that's always a great thing, because there's about 30 or 40 guys that show up and just completely cream each other back and forth. In, the, uh, uh, in, in those fighting games, and that's just awesome. I can't. I'm not really good at fighting games. I'm, I'm barely. I'm barely able to press the buttons fast enough. I just kind of jump and annoy people. Right. But these guys <laughs> are absolutely amazing when they play. So yeah, if you're ever in the Northern Virginia area, usually on the weekends, are uh, uh, a great member of our of our staff, uh, uh, Jag. Uh, Jaguar is usually out there uh, right, playing right. playing games and stuff like that, and he's a really great guy. And uh, a ton of people are always out there. So if you're a big fighter fan, we are going to be starting rolling out some more of the fighter stuff. Absolutely. So that that's going to be great for this summer. So yeah, we're definitely looking forward. By to By the it. way, so we, talking about um, you know our live events and all that, don't forget we've got a live land coming up to, uh, next weekend. Going to be on the 25th. I'm going to be uh, down at Cyberground with the Red Mage and Mr. Mini Me and the whole crew. And uh, there's actually some talk. And here's the good thing. We have, uh, uh, of our, our SC2 team, we have one member that's really in driving distance of us. The rest are a lot of, you know, they, they live in the sunny California area. Uh, but we may have one of our players down at uh, down at Cyberground representing It's Gosu Esports going to be competing in our event, too. So if you're looking to meet myself and Red Mage and you happen to be in the area and you're looking to meet a member, a true pro gamer, a, a member of our newly acquired 
uh, StarCraft 2 team. Pop on down to CyberGround. We'll have more details about the event coming up. So, But um, just take a look in the stream chat here, Red Mage. I have no idea what's going on, but from ShakeMaster52 to quote, it's Beta Monday. Got to get down on Monday. Everybody's looking forward to Alpha Tuesday, Tuesday. Everybody's looking forward to Omega Wednesday, and Wednesday, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> No idea what's going on, but I love it. Whatever it is, I'm down with it. That's right, that's right. As we get into the next game, it's going to be Sharu taking on Hammy. Uh, it's going to be a TVZ going on Shakura's Plateau. This is going to give uh, Sharu plenty of room to move around, and uh, hopefully he, he may be able to battle back uh, you know, Hammy here and take him off the throne. Uh, this, this could be a very... Very <laughs> SC2 over family dinner. Sharu, of course, taking the family <laughs> dinner uh, away from the table. Exactly. Uh, so he can come in and participate. So there you go. Yeah, so I, uh, yes, I did call my dad. For those of you who were wondering, uh, I did call my dad, and he loved the little alien gizmo that I got him there from thinkgeek.com. So. Yeah, I may have to pop that up again. I've still got the gift from that. So the countdown going on. This is the IG King of the Hill number 12, brought to you by Escosu.com. I am AC. That's Red Mace JR. And the sponsors for tonight's event, Steel Series, of course, our lead sponsor. Check them out if you're looking for computer gear. Make sure you buy Steel Series because they support us and they support esports. And of course, Cyberground.us, uh, Max Integration, and Sonya Mabushi Jiu Jitsu in combination, Goju Ryu School of Self Defense. You can find them online at Sonya Mabushi Hyphen Goju. Dot com. And I did it again without even having to read off of the sponsor sheet. Aren't you so proud of me, Red Mage? I'm so proud of you, buddy. I'm just amazed that you can do that just in, in, in almost one breath. You get all that out. You know, if I was to do that, I'd have to either turn away from the mic to <gasps> breathe in real deep or, uh, or I'd have to stop halfway in between and pant, you know, because I'm an right, old man. Right. i gotta have the uh, I got to have the, the, the air tank right here next to me, so... All, right. all kinds of fun. All right, Sharo going to be our challenger, spawning as a Zerg down in the bottom right, roughly that 4 o'clock position. And Hammy, one win away from getting a little bit of a break. And uh, really looking sharp so far in the King of the Hill, number 12, our pink or brushed red Terran, as you please, in the bottom left, roughly that 6 o'clock position. So Hammy, yeah, leading things off with aggression in a lot of different games in a lot of different ways. Um, I, I mean, we've only had him on stream for two games now, but he loves to proxy nonsense, as I like, as we call it. It's not nonsense, by the way. We don't believe in cheese here at um, here at Itsukosu. If it's a strategy and you win, then it's a viable strategy. Cheese is a pretty outdated word, but uh, he's been making good use of it. So probably going to be looking to do the exact same thing again, or maybe just change things up. Maybe he actually wants to play a macro game this time. Yeah, that's that's kind of what it looks like right there, and I think Sharu is going to be the first one to find out that they are going to be uh, close positions right there, which is which is going to be great for uh, Sharu at this point because he'll be able to you know equip uh, uh, the best way possible. But this would have really benefited from from Hanny doing his uh, uh, doing his Reaper rush. This I I I can't say this enough on Shakur's Plateau. I don't see enough Colossus rushing across this hallway. I don't see enough, you know, Reaper rushing across this hallway. You know, you really got to use it. Now Now that they've taken out the destructible rocks, a lot of people thought that it wasn't viable now that the rocks aren't there, but, right. you know, I think it does a lot more for you now that the rocks aren't there. You know, there's a lot more possibilities for it, and I just I just don't see a lot of people using it effectively, and that's, that is a total shame, because there's so many things that you can do to really agitate your opponent. Uh, very, very quickly, just coming in and right. out of there. Well, the Colossus Rush, I, I can understand to a point, um, not wanting to do it. Colossus, very hard to support. About the only thing you can do is blink stalkers down and then walk the entire army up. And uh, that could be a viable rush that really I agree with you. I'm not sure why we haven't seen it nearly as much as one would think, especially in the late game when you're looking for an alternate attack path. But uh, Reapers Reapers are the big thing. You know, Reapers, one early scout Reaper would be so effective here, not even necessarily to do damage, but just to get in and, and get an idea of what your opponent's doing. Sharo's pool pops now. That, that pool came out right on top of the hatch. The hatch did go down first, so the hatch now ready. And um, yeah, I gotta say, Hammy, for the first time, and not looking to do any proxy pressure, not looking to, to really get out the gate and start hitting his opponent in the mouth, and Sharo's gonna take advantage of that, going hatch first and doing so quite, quite safely. Oh yeah, you know, in something like this, you know, I think I think Hammy might uh, might be trying to go for a different scenario right here. I think he he knew that that the time was up for for trying to do all those little shenanigans with the with the proxy barracks. Uh, he is going for that factory right now. He could be trying to go for some sort of early Hellion play, uh, which would definitely be uh, be good. I don't know why he's. 
uh, rallying those those Marines so far into his base as opposed to right there on the line where he can try to take out any any early aggression. Oh, it looks like he's going to start moving some stuff out. Uh, possibly going to get a little map presence there. Look, he's going for a one 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 right there. Going for a starport medevac or no, sorry, sorry starport factory. Uh, putting the tech lad down on the on the factory. He could. Uh, he didn't get Blue Flame Hellions, regardless of how much pressure he was putting on the Hellions, he didn't get Blue Flame. I was right. a little thrown off by that, that if you're going to favor favor that, why you don't get the Blue Flame? But it looks like he is going to go Siege Tanks with the Siege Tech right on top of it. Probably looking to do a, uh, a little bit of a Medevac um, uh, a Siege Tank drop. Probably in the back of Sherwood's Well, I'd say it's a really when you see a player position themselves this way, we see no command center out for him yet. He's not looking to expand. If he's not going to expand, just going for a drop play usually isn't enough. A, a drop is more is going to be a more harassment-based attack. And kind of where what I think we're going to see out of him is a timing push that's maybe going to be based around stem. Or, um, but uh, no tech lab on the factory yet, so I'm really not sure. I'm a little bit... Uh, baffled as to what he's doing because right now he's basically not doing anything effectively well including keeping this overlord out who's going to get in and see everything so uh Sharo is going to know what he's up against he's going to be up against siege tanks and against medevacs uh he can guess that that's going to be siege tanks that are rolling out of there even though he didn't see any and immediately the response of the bane link bus so good instincts there out of Sharo. i uh, knows he's going to be up against tank marine given the uh, the marine count and the fact that the medevacs are already out but yeah uh, you know as of right now Okay, so the reactor now in the command center. I don't know what Hammy's doing. I'm not. A, I'm not a big fan of this. If you're going to expand against a Zerg, fast expand. Just taking. Um, well, it looks like you're right, Red Mage. He's going to load up both tanks and go do a little bit of tank, pure tank harassment. I'm going to bring the Marines. Oh no, he's going to push down the hallway. This is going to make you happy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, going to use the hallway. He's going to use the uh, the medevac to get the uh, the above ground <clears throat> right there. And yeah, this this could definitely be very very good. Uh, for him, although there's not a whole lot, he's gonna have to really press those tanks against the uh, the wall there to try to get it. But uh, that that one overlord may be able to spot this uh, uh, this drop coming in here momentarily, and uh, we see that more and more things. Yep, there you go. He definitely spotted something going on. He's definitely going right for the uh, right for the destructible rocks. He's gonna try to come in behind everything right there. So yeah, the the, the creep tells all all those drones being pulled off very very quickly uh, and right down into the natural. Right. Well, it's this is a somewhat effective attack. What I don't understand out of Sharo is why is he not just running in the front here? Well, why is he not just um, running all these zerglings into the front, saying, "Okay, you know what? That's fine. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have this for the moment. I know for a fact you're still on one base. My baneling nest has been done. Why doesn't he just go push with banelings and make things happen that way instead of wasting all this time trying to knock these rocks down?" Um, you know, he he could churn zerglings. He could put up spine crawlers back here to try and defend this. Uh, but, you know, the fact that he let this happen at all, he let these Marines get to this point, means he was out of position. He's, uh, we see him taking a third. Now he's doing the right thing. That's exactly what he needed to, to do immediately anyway. Uh, but we already see another tank and more Marines are in position here for Hammy. So Hammy should be able to defend this quite well. And uh, the, the slow reaction out of Sharo really going to cost him here, Red Mage. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm right there with you. You really should just run with those banelings real quick. Decimated that line. Because not only that, but, uh, the, uh, but Hammy was supply blocked for about 20 or 30 seconds there. Right. Uh, and so he had plenty of time to just run in there and just maul uh, one of those supply depots and go in. There was a, a very minimal amount of force. But, yeah, now, now it's, now it's going to be just a little too late because now he's going to know that there's something coming. And boom, it all comes up. Those banelings are in the wrong position. Yep, banelings coming up behind the zerglings. Not the best way to execute a baneling bus. I think maybe a little bit of nerves getting the Sharo here. Sharo um, seems to be a competent player in his timings and in his tech switches, but um, that was just a very, very, very ugly uh, baneling bus there. And I want to guess again that maybe it's some nerves or maybe he's just be feeling flustered. We know he's better than that. So, uh, But Hammy, I like this. He's pulling back home. He took the hatch out. He caused the, the delay he wanted to. He's got drones just ha hanging out, not doing anything. So Sharo definitely flustered in his plane. Now he's going to take his expansion. But uh, really at this point, Sharo should be in better position than he is. If we go to the income tab, we can see 43 harvesters to 34 of Hammy, but Hammy does have mules, of course. That makes all the difference. Um, but really, Hammy right now, excuse me, Sharo, he's got to feel somewhat safe. Um, he's already taken this third hatch, and he's rebuilding his first, so the first about to pop. I really wouldn't mind even him taking another one because he either needs to attack or he needs to get a gigantic economic lead and try and capitalize that on that immediately. Otherwise, he's going to be behind for the rest of the game. Yeah, I'm right there with you, AC. You're absolutely right about that. 
you know, and uh, a big thing that he's doing right now is, you know, he's, he's starting to put a little bit of defense there on the on the third hatch um, that he's got right there. But you know, right now, him he's him he's kind of walled himself up again. He's he's now in there. He's got two bunkers right there. He, he uh, wrapped it up with an engineering bag, so he's kind of trapped himself. There's not a, he, he hasn't dumped the second gas, uh, the two gases yet on that natural. So he's going to start running out of gas. He's run out of gas already. So why he's so far behind now doing that? Now he had to go ahead and and, sacri- and, and junk out. One of those bunkers he knew was trapped in there, so it looks like he may start to move out right now. And I think that that little bit of a, a lead that Sharu had, I think the time is almost done. You know, he is getting the centrifugal hooks that are almost done right. for those uh, for those uh, banelings, but I don't think he has any banelings on the board. No, he doesn't. He doesn't really have any gas. And and again, I, I'm just looking at the production queue. The spire is about to pop now, but he doesn't have the gas to, to support a spire. He doesn't have the economy to support that and to try to defend and to try to make drones and to try and push his opponent. So again, not trying to knock Sharo. I, I just, I know how it feels. I, I got a feeling he just got flustered and now he's his decision making not the best. The Bainley's going to run in and only going to get the front little portion of those Marines uh, really throwing away a good number of Banelings. And this is going to be the GG. Sharo's not going to have anything to deal with this. 14 Banelings on the way, but the tank count still very, very high. We see that there's six tanks in this mix. Sharo now even supply blocked, losing an Overlord. Tank's going to be able to siege up and going to be able to take out everything coming in from any angle. He's going to be able to defend himself from behind as well as from anything coming down the ramp. And yeah, this is going to be a slow sort of an end to this game, but um, so long as he stays on top of this and doesn't throw his units away, he's got a good, a decent number of Marines left over. Um, doesn't need to be splitting him up like this. This is kind of goofy. But um, but yeah, the, this is going to be the GG one way or the other, I think, Red Mage. Oh, yeah, you know, and the unfortunate thing was that Banley Nest was just a little too close to the edge, uh, and it was it was just within the uh, the sieging range, so that's gone now. So it doesn't even have that. Now he's got to try to remake it now uh, up uh, up inside of his main. So, yeah, this is yeah this is not going to be going too well. He's trying to turn out as many Zerglings as he can, but as soon as they, they, they come up, I don't know where his rally point. He's got a weird rally point going for him. There he goes. Now he's got a much better rally point, and, uh, yeah, he's about ready to lose this layer as well. Yeah, so that's, um, that's going to be even worse. Yeah, losing this layer, that really is going to be... I mean, he's he's rebuilding the Baneling Nest now, but it's going to be too little too late. Um, you know, the medevac count is decent enough to support and protect this number of Marines, such in small numbers, and the tanks. I mean, really, what can he deal to, do to deal with it? Being beautifully controlled, I should say, by Hammy as well. Um, putting them in situations where they can only really be attacked on one or two angles. Yeah, you know, and he, yeah, he's definitely keeping his, his back to him right there. Not just that, but he's behind the reeds there. So they've got to come through the reeds before they can uh, they can actually get into an attack path. Right. So uh, you know, he's he's definitely got a, he's definitely got a really good grasp of where to put those units. And uh, now, yeah, now he sacks the third. The you know, the 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 main st- or the the naturals trying to go back into place, but he just he just doesn't have it. And you know, honestly, instead of instead of putting it down at the natural, he really should have put down a macro hatch uh, right there next to his main, and just and just try to defend uh, further back up that little ramp there and, and see what that did. Well, you can't uh, I'm really not say that that, 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 that that could turn it around, but it would have been a little bit better than, than trying to throw it down uh, throw it down on conquered territory. Right, yeah, I'm with you on that, but again, you know, if he's going to do that, he may as well just GG anyway, because there's no way a Zerg, a one-base Zerg that's mining off of one base can compete uh, with a two-basing Terran, especially uh, when the Terran has this much map control. Now that the reinforcements have arrived, another pack of Marines, one Marauder. Hey, Baneling Bomb going to get somebody, though, so good for Sharo. Sharo going to get some shots in before things are done. Yep, GG's immediately afterwards. But uh, that was a pretty, pretty nice looking little bangling mine there at our IG King of the Hill number twelve, brought to you by itsgosu.com. I'm sure right about that, AC, and that's gonna, uh, that's gonna be uh, Hammy's fourth, right? That's that. That's yep. All Hammy's yep. Fourth. That's Hammy's fourth. Yep. So Hammy's gonna get a break. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. By the way, I'm AC. That's Red Mage Jr. And this is the IG King of the Hill number twelve, brought to you by itsgosu.com on this Father's Day. Uh, we've been having a good number of issues, but it seems like we've gotten a lot of them sorted out. So if you're hanging out with us here in the Justin TV stream or in the Battle.net channel, thanks so much for, for kicking it with us. Hope everybody uh, either bought their dad a gift or ga- at least gave the old guy a phone call. Um, you know, Or if you're a, a father yourself, even if you're just a father to a little kitty like I happen to be, happy Father's Day to you um, from all of us here at the IG staff. So I'm getting a few PMs on Battle.net um, asking about what the music is for the night, so I'm going to go ahead and pop that up. Make sure you check all these out. Ronald Jinkies and Machina Supremacy, you can find them 
uh, online, just ronaldjinkies.com or machinasupremacy.com. Also, our opening little ditty that you hear every time we bring the stream live, that's Battle by Halo Topic. You can find that at halotopic.newgrounds.com. So who we got coming up next here, Red Mage? Well, actually, uh, Hammy wants to know if he can skip his break and just keep playing. I Yeah, that's fine. It's his prerogative. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he says he wants to keep going. He wants to try to uh, keep trying to mow through the, uh, the list. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So, uh, kudos to him. Not taking that, not taking the little, uh, not taking a little break there. So, we'll see if we can't get him in there. And he is going to be taking on the chief. Or, yeah, yeah, the chief. I was going to say the chef. But there's a little eye in there. And, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you remember that old commercial, like back from like the late '90s? I can't remember what it. Was. I can't remember what it was a commercial for. I think it was um, either for Twix or for Snickers, of the guy who's painting the uh, painting the football field for the Super Bowl, and instead of writing Chiefs, he writes uh, Chefs in the end zone. Yeah, uh, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm making see if I'm the only guy who has that memory tucked away anywhere. So. But um, ah, for Snickers says Fire Minks. I was thinking it was for Snickers too, but but uh, anyway, thanks so much, guys, again for being here with us. We're rocking out to the Machina Supremacy at the moment, getting Hammy in for yet another match. Who's he going to be taking on, Red Mage? Uh, the Chief or or the Chef? They got me confused. It's the chi the Chef. Uh, yeah, he, he's uh, he's in there for the Chef, and then uh, beyond that, we're uh, we're almost down to our, our basically bottom three right now. Oh, very nice. Uh, in the list, you know, uh, uh, the Chief, Narwhal, and VG Dave are, are, are next up. So it's a very, very big end of the field today. Uh, so uh, we can definitely see some some very interesting things By going the way, on speaking here, so. of speaking of Father's Day, we were so busy trying to get the stream up and running, I forgot to shut my door. My little kitty is sitting right next to my microphone right now. So if you happen to hear something brush against the microphone, that's what it is. I usually try and be a much more professional guy, but again... The kitty made it into the room. I'm not about to throw him out because he's being sweet. Besides, how am I going to throw my own son out on Father's Day, right? That's right. You can't throw your son out there on Father's Day. You know, I, and a big tradition that my dad has is uh, is there was a uh, there was a Looney Tunes cartoon a long time ago where uh, it was um, the the three bears, the three uh, Looney Tunes bears. With the, the it was the really small dad and the mom with the little shower cap on, and then right, the really right. uh, dumb fat son or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so uh, he uh, he's like. Oh, you know, it is it is your father's day. I will I will get you your 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 uh your pipe and slippers. So your know, dad sits down, he gives him the slippers, he right. goes in there to go to go fill his pipe and he's like, I know I know what this is. It's it's uh tobacco. C A T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I am a good speller as I am. B A T Rhode Island and he starts stuffing in uh, dynamite into into dad's <laughs> pipe there as opposed to the tobacco. So Very yeah, nice. so my dad watches that every Father's Day and of course I call him up with, with a, a little bit of stick for it too. So Right, right. Uh, that's, that's that's kind of our, our little thing. So yeah, that's that, that's always a humorous thing and uh, yeah, we did give uh, our roommate um, you know, um, uh, we we did give Keith a uh, a, a, de a Father's Day card. Oh, that's from, good. From cats. Day. Yeah, because we're we're just that cheesy there. So yeah, you always get birthday gifts from the cats as well. Oh yeah. Uh, usually it involves food that you have to give them. You know, <laughs> oh, they, of course. Although they're gift givers, they're they they want the gifts themselves. Well, they they want to share. They want to share. That's all. They just want to share in your joy. Speaking of, um, as soon as I mentioned cat again on Battle.net, I got a message with a few uh, from a, a few people asking if I could show a picture of my cat. So yes, I can. Here's my little buddy. Hang on, let me let me load it up for you. But um, but yeah, you've got a ton of cats too, Red Mage. You and I are such cat guys, aren't we? We are some serious, serious cat guys, uh, right there. Yeah, I uh, unfortunately, yeah, when I was showing you guys my room, I I, sh I shut my room because otherwise the cats climb all over me. Right. And uh, like my I, little I can't really get work done. Yeah. So. There's my little guy. It's my little guy taken just a uh, <laughs> picture taken not too long ago, just a few months ago. My little Pixel. So yes, I am a father. Apparently, I know Pixel bought me a card. Surprisingly, right? <laughs> Y'all, that's so cute. That, that he did this. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and skip the chief because or the chef because I just can't see. He's, he's apparently in a game, so I guess he's doing something else. Oh, okay. Uh, he's too good for us. I get it. That's fine, man. It's fine. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> we're not gonna be like the crazy ex-girlfriend that stalks him and sends him messages all the time. But, um, but, oh, yes, thanks, guys. I'm sure, you know, Pixel's sitting right next to me now. He appreciates everyone saying he's cute. 
And uh, yes, I love little orange tabbies as well. They come from my favorite, my favorite author as well. So, but uh, but yeah. So if you guys got pictures, of, I'll tell you what. We'll make it a since it's Father's Day. If you happen to be a father or even a mother of a little kitty and you want a picture thrown up on the stream here, feel free to pop that to me in the chat, and I'll throw up as many as I can. Uh, while we continue to play out our King of the Hill number 12. And I, I, I just love the idea of someone joining this. Be like, ooh, awesome, a King of the Hill. Let's watch some StarCraft, and we're talking about cats. Imagine that. <laughs> you know what the worst part of it is? Is all three... Okay, there I was just saying, uh, the, the chef is not... No, uh, the chef is not already... Uh, all three of the bottom... Uh, at the bottom of the list were all in games. Doing something else. Every single one of them. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> very, 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 very cute, guys. Very cute. I think they were messing with messing with replays or something. But by the way, gentlemen, uh, I, I see a lot of people saying, "Let's see, um, uh, let's see, where is it? I'm working the actual game. I'm in a replay. Yeah, everybody's saying they're in replays." And Haminator says, "Dogs are better." Uh, Shake Master says, "Dogs don't count. They're better." You guys see, this is what I like to call you being wrong, like patently, <laughs> demonstrably incorrect. And uh, that's fine. You're allowed to be wrong because, well, you're allowed to be wrong, but I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Cats are so much better than dogs, uh, just like the Banshee is so much hotter than the meta than, than the medevac chick. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. So, you know, I hate to be the, the, the bearer of bad news, but you're incorrect, and that's simply where things stand. So we've got Hammy and the, ch the Chef. It is the Chef. There's no I in there, you liar. Yep. The Chef. So. <laughs> the chiefs, the Chefs. <laughs> Uh, it's a deadly SC2 live says, "Man, I'm not a pet fan. If you got a cat, you'd be a pet fan. I promise." But, um, but anyway, we're gonna be moving back into more StarCraft action, forthwith, and with the greatest amount of haste. This is the IG King of the Hill number twelve, brought to you by Scosu.com, and of course, brought to you by our wonderful sponsors: Steel Series Cyberground, Max Integration, and Sonya Mabushi Jujutsu in combination Goju Ryu School of Self Defense. You can find them online at Sonya Mabushi-Goju.com. So, moving in. Taking a look, the ready check going down at the moment. Um, <laughs> the chef didn't even know he's playing. Nice. <laughs> Gotta love that. <laughs> I just signed up for the event. I, I didn't know what it was. But yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Alright, so yeah, we're... Uh, By the way, guys, get the ready check. While, while, we're, uh, while we're waiting, everybody make sure they tune in on Wednesday if you happen to have the chance to the NASL Open Tournament. We're going to have a number of, I, of It's Gosu... Um, it's go so esports team members are SC2 team competing. We're gonna have Gatored, we're gonna have Shield, we're gonna have WBC, uh, gonna have Namcheer, aka Richman. Um, so yeah, tune into uh, to to the NASL Open on Wednesday. I'm not gonna lie, Red Mage. Um, I have I, whoever planned out the way they're gonna be conducting the NASL Open. I don't get it. It's gonna be taking place. Get this at 1 p.m. on a Wednesday, and that's Eastern Standard Time. For a lot of our players who live out in the Pacific, the check-in is 9 in the morning. 9 a.m. On a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and they actually, it was supposed to start tomorrow. They were going to be starting the uh, tournament tomorrow. And surprisingly, very few people have signed up. Like, less than 200 people have signed up uh, to compete in that Open. So, there's a very good chance we're going to be seeing some, some IG players uh, make it into the NASL next season. So, you can imagine how excited we are about that. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna be excited about that. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for the new GS uh, TL. All kinds of really great stuff going on. You know, um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a huge month for StarCraft. Oh, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, in, in July. You know, now we're gonna be rolling out our summer schedule. Uh, but we're you know we're gonna be doing a lot more events and cool oh, things man. like that. You know, if you if you think what we're doing now is awesome and and, uh, oh, and right huge, me. you know, wait till we roll that thing out. I know a lot of people. I was talking to some people yesterday while I was at Starbucks uh, with uh, Mr. Mini Me, and um, and uh, everyone was like, "Well, where have you guys been for the last two days?" Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we need a couple of days just to let the voices rest, get ready. Well, for yeah, but, uh, what's going on? Oh, exactly. But um, no lie, guys. We're going to be doing so much, and um, I've been designing the, the 2011 Summer Tournament Series, and I'm not going to lie, I, I, I don't want to give it away. I want it to be a big announcement because we plan on announcing it on Team Liquid and Reddit and elsewhere, but a special shout-out, by the way, to those communities, Team Liquid and uh, SC Reddit, the SC Reddit community, great buddies of ours as well, but um, uh, yeah, let's just say that whenever we say we're going to be giving out more money and doing more events, the more events thing, actually, as of right now, we're going to be doing about the same number of events, okay? That's not counting live events. When you when you factor in live events, 
um, that we do at the land centers and all. It is going to be more. But in terms of the amount of money and prizes we're giving away, you guys are like, I could throw a number at you right now, but you'd be like, no, you're lying. You're overblowing it. There's no way that you're actually going to be giving away that much stuff in a single three month period. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to wait for the official announcement on Team Liquid and we'll break all that news here. But moving in, the chef, another Zerg player. Now, a large number of Zerg players turned out tonight. I absolutely love it. Going to be our green Zergy buddy spawning at the 12 o'clock position and Hammy on a four win win streak right now. Our pink or brushed red Terran, if you prefer red mage, spawning down at the bottom 6 o'clock position. So Hammy is a Masters League player, by the way. There's been some some talk in the uh, in the old chat about that. Everybody feels like he's unbeatable. Guys, Masters League players are not perfect, okay? I'm not going to lie. There, uh, you know, there are some holes in every player's game, and unless you, unless you just really lack the, um, lack the mechanics or whatever to keep up, um, just because he's a Masters League player does not mean that he's unbeatable. So don't let that intimidate you. The Red Mage continues to deal with our. Sorry, no, you're good. Yeah, you're no, good. No, I'm I, sorry, I wasn't. No, I, was, uh, I, I had actually, uh, it was, it was my bad because uh, Hammy was asking, did he choose this map? But I, I had actually forgotten that I had the map set up for. Uh, the intermission play right. for him, and I just I went ahead and just invited as opposed to asking him the thing. So yeah, that was my bad. So I'm just apologizing to Hammy that uh, that I had uh, put him into a, a Metalopolis and he didn't really get to choose. But with the cross spawn positions, I I don't know if he was looking to do anything really crazy or creative or or weird. But well, it's a you know, smallish think, map anyway. I mean, if it's he a smallish map, even yeah. in cross spawns, you know, and people forget this cross spawn positions on Metalopolis, if I'm not mistaken, is actually shorter than the default spawn positions on Zelnaga Caverns. So this is not a extremely large map by any stretch of the imagination, even in cross spawns. We see Hammy's SCV doing a little bit of mining harassment here, was mining off the minerals, managing to force a drone or two to pull and to try and chase him out before he does any more slight economic damage. The hatch, just about halfway done. Uh, we see that Chef did go hatch first, so looking to capitalize on the cross bomb positions as soon as he can. And Hammy going to be two racks and doing the two racks noise, uh, which I absolutely love as a Terran player, and I know every Zerg player in history absolutely hates. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they absolutely do hate that. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, speaking of, like, StarCraft 2, well, we got a couple of seconds here. Uh, tell us about your experiences today on the ladder. So you were telling me that you were not doing well? No, I was. I'm not going to lie, guys. Uh, the amount of time that I get to play is very, very limited now uh, due to how much we do with uh, with IG. And I just want you to picture, you know, now, now that we've got the team, uh, the the, uh, the team it's Gosu guys hanging out in the chat, and I'm sure you've seen them, you know, Gatored Shield, and I'm sure Rum Cake, um, WB. You see uh, Mezzo, Linko, uh, Bubbles, Kai Hall. Kai Hall. I mean, such a gigantic and unbelievably talented team we managed to pick up. And, and we hope that those guys are going to make each and every one of you guys proud moving into MLG Anaheim. But, you know, I hang out with them, and I've been spending a lot of time observing. Um, even in my free time, when I normally would be playing, a little bit of time that I have, they're like, hey, AC, you want to observe? I'm like, yeah, I want to watch some of the best players in the flipping <laughs> world play. Are you kidding me? So I, you know, I go in and observe, and just some uh, the the play, the, the the quality of play is amazing. But finally, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna practice a couple build orders, get my hands a little bit warmed up, and then go go ladder. Lost three in a row, and not like not like not like lost three in a row, but like got raffle stomped three times in a row, which upsets me because before I took the little break that I took, and before everything got super busy in the last two weeks, I was on a 16. I was I had won 16 out of my last 20. It was about to rank up either to diamond or to masters. So a little bit upset wow. about that but it's okay it happens guys so hang out you know keep keep ball you know keep pounding away on the ladder it'll pay off just don't take two week long breaks like i did otherwise it will mess with your mechanics i guarantee it oh yeah now we see hammy doing something really interesting i don't know if you're down there yet but uh, he he was building the two barracks up the top for a wall end now he's moved him down to the bottom he actually destroyed the uh the, the makeshift supply depot that's there on the MLG Metalopolis. It has now moved those two barracks down to kind of block it off just a little bit. Although it does look like there might be a little bit of room just off to the one side so we can get people out and uh, to the back end of the mineral line. So right. that's, uh, that's interesting. I haven't, I haven't really seen that. Uh, I was going to say, lot. I think I saw this. I can't remember. It was so early in the morning and there was so much, so much action for the, um, the Super Tournament Finals, and I don't. Did, did you tune into the Super Tournament Finals on um, just a couple days ago, Red Mage? 
I I could not. I tried to, and then it said that my something was wrong with my uh, my connection or whatever, okay, well, so I wasn't I, able to watch it. I actually tuned in live on replays. Korean time, so I you know I I got to catch it regardless. But uh, leading up to it, they actually had a surprise match. It was the finals from a tournament that they had been conducting live uh, for um, LG 3D Cinema, and it was uh, Dong Rigu versus um, versus SC SC Foyu. And if I'm not mistaken, this this build was used in that matchup. I'm almost positive. Um, that SC Foyu did this to Dong Regu. He uh, actually faked the two racks and immediately threw down an expansion, attacked on a ton of barracks in a factory, and went for a marine tank timing push. And if I'm not even mistaken, if I'm really right, I think it was on this map, and I think he, he did a, a wall end very similar to this as well. So um, I, I, if I'm wrong, correct me, guys, but I'm almost positive that this, a, a build very, very similar to this was used in, in, in that matchup. So and this could be, this is so vicious if your uh, Zerg opponent is very slow in spotting it. We see that Chef's only got one spot. Crawler, a small number of Zerglings, and a Baneling Nest, and yeah, that's fine, but this is already a high number of Marines he's just moving out with, another high number of Marines hanging out back at home, and the tank's already being churned, actually, no, uh, check that, he's not churning tanks, he's churning Hellions. Oh, wow, that's going to be, that, that's going to give him a whole lot of map control very, very quickly with those Hellions, and he is finally getting the Blue Flame, uh, so that's going to be very, very good. Oh yeah, absolutely. The blue flame about halfway done. The Marines, though, have gotten into a big number here for Hammy. Uh, he's up to, call it, yeah, including the uh, the little wolf statue here. 17 guys, actually, just 60 Marines. They're going to catch a stray overlord here and uh, take that down. That's going to force his opponent. No, oh, actually, uh, Deshev has got a, quite a number of free overlords. And this entire attack, well, okay, Hammy's actually going to push the natural. I was going to say, this entire attack is meant to be delayed, so you can easily deny the third. That's the whole point of doing this. If he's just going to push the the, uh, the natural, it's going to be a little bit weak, given that the Banelings are going to be out, and he has no tank support. Uh, so here we go. The Bainling's going to rush in. A decent Marine spread, though. The first few Marines, oh, this is going to get eaten alive. And, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that out of Hammy at all. He he executed the fake out and uh, the tech switch very, very well. But he basically just threw away all of those Marines that do no real damage. The point of getting the, of, the, of that Marine push should be to deny or delay this third, and that just did not happen. Yeah, uh, absolutely not. Yeah, they were, they were very well handed uh, there by, by Chef. Uh, waiting to see what he's going to do. And not only did he get, get the macro hatch, he's taken the third, so he's definitely going to be able to crank out a, a good amount of, uh, of units here shortly. And, uh, you know, honestly, with that, he, he seems to be having, a, he's definitely lining himself up to make sure that he's not going to be dropped all that easily. He's well, got, there's a drop uh, coming in right now. Four Hellions oh, being man, dropped is, right on. I see that. Oh. Yeah, here we go. Going to be Blue Flame Hellions all going to line up and roast a ton of drones. The Queen, very slow to react, just going to town on the drone line here uh, for the Chef. The Chef not even pulling the drones. Not sure what in the hell he's thinking there. And a great pickup. And he's just going to run. Oh, wow. Going to run right down to the natural. So great, great control here uh, by by Hammy, though. <laughs> I say that. Yeah, the Bane is moving and clean that up. But um, managing to do a good amount of damage. Now he's going to spot the Mutalisks as well, so he knows he's going to have to start throwing down turrets if he wants to expand much beyond his natural and his main. And if we uh, bring up the the tab here, we see the workers killed. Eight, eight workers killed there by Hammy. So a pretty effective attack, though not quite cost effective in terms of the, the sacrifice of the medevac and the four Hellions. But uh, more Hellions have been have been grouped up and are now being rallied out. And uh, more Marines and medevacs on the way as well. I guess looks like the, you know Hammy's trying to hit a timing here, but I can't help but think he really his timing was earlier. And the fact that he didn't do enough damage with that first round of uh, that first round of Marines is really going to make this attack a lot weaker than it should be otherwise. Oh yeah, and Chef is running a little a little odd here. Okay, I was going to say he just had a bunch of drones just hanging out at that macro hatch, and those uh, those Hellions are moving in now. All right, he moves in. He roasts a lot of drones there on the ramp. Gets a bunch more. Are you kidding me? Wow, that's got to be more than a dozen, if not more drones roasted out. The economy of the Chef absolutely. Uh, absolutely crippled right now. The Marine's going to be cleaned up pretty easily, but uh, if we go to the income tab, wow, we can actually see Deshef, it, it As much damage as he took there, it doesn't really matter. He's up on four hatches. He's got three bases. He's yet to come under any real threat, and again, I'm a little baffled by Hammy's choice to continue to push the, the crux of this defense right here uh, in this narrow little choke on Metalopolis. He needs to be pushing the third and trying to stretch his opponent out, and uh, right now, I don't think there's any question. Hammy's way behind. 
Oh yeah, Hammy is definitely behind, regardless of how much pressure he's putting on. Now we see that uh, uh, Chef is going to start moving in this mutilus there on the flank. Uh, there are turrets up, but there is a nice little window. There's a very small window where he's going to be able to uh, slide in if he if he doesn't if he doesn't go in there. But yeah, he's turned away pretty quickly by those uh, uh, by those turrets. Very smart. Doesn't try to stick around and try to take out that one turret while sacrificing half that mutilus army. So. Very good job there, pulling those guys back, and uh, and now we see another another round of, of Hellion Marine medevac coming in now. All right, so the infestation um, pit completes the pathogen glands on the way. The Roach Warren going down right right behind it, and the Lair being upgraded to Hive Tech. Or, or no, actually, he's just yeah, he's upgrading the Hive Tech here. So he's looking to do everything at once, and he's got the economy to do it. Hammy gonna try and push yet again. The Marine count though is still pretty pretty low, so he's gonna have to watch out for Mutalis. The Hellion's gonna be cleaned up by Mutalis, and now they're just gonna run in once again and try and do some damage, trying to get into the economy. Gonna roast even more drones. Tons of dead dead little buggies here in the mineral line of the natural the queen's gonna die as well such a high hellion count nine of them out right now he's gonna clean up the economy here completely now he needs to rush the third rushing into the main here i have no idea why this is the choice yet again he's not going to be able to really uh to kill off any production facilities he's going to be able to do some damage to the economy and uh, possibly take down some queens but the the the, the mutilists are in a decent enough count that if they know actually he's going to not control them very well um, so, but he's got a, a handful of them now targeting down the Hellions. The Hellions cleaned up. The Mutalists count at a decent number, up to nine. So he's going to be able to finish this attack off. We bring up the uh, units killed. 54 workers killed this game by Hammy, Red Mage. 54 workers. Wow, that is an unbelievable amount right there. And uh, now now Chef's getting out those infestors with the burrow. I think he's now going to start throwing down a lot more. We just see that a uh, command center being uh, being built right now uh, for uh, for Hammy. So Hammy is definitely looking to expand. He is really running himself ragged on those minerals. He's almost mined out in the main. He's uh, Once once all those, those SCVs move down, he'll quickly be uh, mined out. He's using a ton of of mules to try to keep cranking out those hellions and marines and i you know i i, I think he's i think this third base is a little short so i, I think until that that economy starts kicking in he's really going to be behind all right three investors moving into oh. to what would be the position of the third here the mutilist continuing to harass is he going to draw he kind of draws some of the marines out and this is very important. If he can use these Mutalists to draw these Marines out into the middle of the map and get them in position for a good fungal growth, three Infestors with the Pathogen Glands would be able to clean up a lot of these. Two Thors out on the map now uh, for Hammy, but as you pointed out, he's really two basing entirely too long. Uh, the main is pretty much mined out. The, the second is probably about half mined out at this point. And he's got every tech structure on the planet up and upgrading and producing something that's great. Uh, but the Greater Spire now on the way for Chef as well as seven infestors. So we're going to have a very high infestor count. Neural Parasite being completed as well. Going to be able to deal with these Thors. And uh, Hammy uh, deciding that now's the time he wants to push in. Again, I can't help but feel like Hammy has just nickel and dined himself with these attacks. He hasn't really hit any good timings. His decision making has been kind of suspect. And the Chef has capitalized on it so far. We're going to see if the Chef can hold. Here we go. Here's the stem. Fungal Gross go down on a good chunk of the Marines. All the infestors get caught on the wall. I don't know what happened there. Bad rally point had to have been but all these marines get hit with double fungal growths just melting in front of the uh, in front of the natural here now the roaches rallied in gonna try and deal with these fours he's got to get his units in together in a pack the mutilists come in now gonna be able to magic box these fours there we go a decent little usage of that and uh, looks like he's gonna clean this up pretty pretty easily still no third base up for hammy yet so he's still not mining except off of pretty much one base and I'd say that right there is going to do it, Red Mage, unless Hammy can just pull off some miracle. I don't know that he's ever going to be able to put together an attack that's going to have anywhere near that amount of strength. Oh, absolutely not. You know, Chef has, has done a great job kind of doing a rope-a-dope right there, kind of being like, well, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak, and just keeps, you know, just keeps uh, holding Hammy back, holding Hammy back, and I think now is the time where he's going to start rolling things out a little bit. He just, uh, Chef is just a little off on his control when he was battling those stores. Only a couple of those mutilists were actually target-firing things down. He wasn't right. really focused on it, but now he's going in for the third right now of Hammy, and he's just absolutely wrecking it, wrecking it to the point where there's going to be no SCV left standing, and then now that entire army of Hammies is being brought in to try to repel this onslaught there of Mutalist and Zurich. 
Oh, yeah. DeShef needs to pull back right now and regroup. Trying to delay that third, that's a good move. But um, now's not the time he wants to engage. He needs to play a little bit defensively, get to the supply cap, get up his broodlords, replace those infestors. Uh, th the worst part of that attack, or excuse me, that defense uh, by DeShef in the last attack, the last major attack by Hammy, was how many infestors he lost to a bad rally point. Lost five of them. That's so much gas and so much investment. Ex investment, yeah. So much investment in minerals, I should say. So, but triple expansions coming out right now for for Chef. He's taking the gold. He's taking and he's the, moving the, back the, into the third here of Hammy. He's got a good amount of Bane links. Oh well, all the SCV's gonna die. Paying back a little bit of the harassment that he suffered from Hammy all game, doing some economic damage. And we see Hammy getting a little froggy once again with his Thors and his Marines. That actually added on a couple of Hellions and tanks. And at this point, this is almost all in for Hammy. He's so far behind economically that he has to do some damage. Hellion's going to move in, bro some more drones. And this has really been uh, the way Hammy's been able to stay in things at all, is the fact that he's managed to do so, so much damage to drones. And now, see, and this is the problem. The chef tried to get out and be active on the map and deny that third when he really should have been playing more defensive and trying to stay alive because this is a very scary push and it's going to have to be dealt with just right. Uh, otherwise, Hammy might find a way to bounce back in. A Corruptor dies immediately off of another bad rally point. Uh, I'm sure intended to be a Broodlord. We see the army massing here, so more Infestors and Zerglings. The Infestors, the Fungal Growth is going to be huge. Gets two good ones off, going to clean up all those Marines in that one big ball. Now the Zerglings going for the surround on the very slow mech units. The Thors and the tanks not going to last the evening. And there's the GG from Hammy, the Chef. Unthrones our prince in waiting, taking the crown himself here at the IG King of the Hill number 12, brought to you by its gosu.com. Absolutely brutal matchup right there. My gracious, right there. Uh, the chef really pulling out a great victory right there. Man, that was so good uh, toward the end. Going to find out what he wants is his map choice in the final matchup uh, here. Or the, oh, sorry, in the near final matchup. Uh, now he's just going to take our Narwhal and DG Dave, and he could possibly take. The end of the cost series today. Cough number 12, the IG cough number 12. Uh, unbelievable there, AC. Uh, you know, that that was a terrific game. Oh, Absolutely terrific game. So very, so very, very good. You know, and, and at the beginning of the game, again, I was talking about everyone in the chat said, it's like, oh, he's a Masters player. He knows no one's going to beat him. That's why he's cheesing everyone. Well, if we take a look at the, at the chef, I'm pulling up his profile now. I'm going to see what level he was. But again, Masters players, they've got plenty of room for improvement. Um, and, and, you know, I hate to put it this way and be that guy, but Masters players on the North American server are not always as good as you would think they would be based on their ranking. Uh, in fact, the chef was another Masters player, so he sweeps in and brings an end to the rain by Hammy. But uh, amazing action and a great TVZ here on the IG King of the Hill number 12, Red Mage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just absolutely brutal right there. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people in the chat say, well, I guess, you know, Hammy's not great toward the end of the uh, toward the the mid late game, and that and that kind of showed there that that Hammy's kind of used to being able to to end things out pretty quickly with those uh, with the, those great build orders, those great uh, those, those great uh, you know timing pushes right. that he does very very early on. But yeah, it, it definitely looked like he was uh, you know kind of in a in a different world uh, when it came to the mid to late game. Right, absolutely. So, Shake Master wants to know, hey Red Mage, are there any cars tonight, brother? Uh, no cards today because we were running a little late, so we weren't able to do a, a, a great, a good card giveaway today. So no right. cards today, but we will try to double those up uh, uh, tomorrow. Absolutely for the for the IG beta uh, divisional. So nope. And uh, and see, this is what I like about yeah. I, uh, okay, Hammy, you're now one of my favorite players in the world. He shows up in the in the stream here immediately. Says GG. I wasn't even thinking about getting a third. I thought I had it easy. I got cocky. I like that, Hammy. So we hope to have <laughs> you back, brother. I just, you know, it's okay. There's nothing wrong being like, yeah, man, I kind of screwed the pooch there. I soiled the bed in a very disgusting manner. And uh, nothing wrong with that at all. So, But, yeah, I'm going to be moving into our next game as soon as dumbass me decides to click join game. <laughs> Narwhal, on, Narwhal and DeChef, and Narwhal, a guy we know and love, comes out for a ton of our events, Red Mage. Seems like he signs up for everything. Oh yeah, anything anything he's qualified for, he is ready to go for it. So yeah, now we're we're definitely seeing something very very cool. Uh, you know, possibly seeing a ZVZ and uh, on Shakura's plateau here. Oh wow! You know, uh, yeah, this is gonna get pretty uh, pretty crazy, pretty fast, I think. Um, Shake, <laughs> excuse me. Shake Master says in the chat he must be a redditor to Narwhal's name. 
the very first time I saw Narwhal, we're talking months and months ago, like three, four months ago, the first time I saw Narwhal signed up, I made the same comment. He actually is not a Redditor, believe that or not. He just likes dolphin porpoise looking things with gigantic scary horns in the middle of their head. So, uh, yeah. Uh, do you ever look up a picture of a Narwhal Red Mage? You need to. Oh, no, no. I, I, I know what a Narwhal is. I just was unaware that it is not. I actually learned that from the Discovery Channel a couple of weeks ago. Right. They were actually going through the, the Narwhal thing, and I that, that's why I found it odd that that, that was like a, a Redditor thing, because I was like, that's not their mascot. They have the little dude there with the, with the eyes. Right. No, you're exactly right. And it's just, it is one of those weird things where Redditors just decided to adopt that. So, again, nothing but love to the SC Reddit community. And uh, to head over there, if you're looking for another good community, we don't want you to leave us, but we do want you to uh, to make sure that uh, you get a chance to participate in every great community on StarCraft. So head over to the FC Reddit community if you're looking for somewhere else to call home at least part of the time. But you, you would never leave us. Anyway, you love Red Mage and I too much. Narwhal, our non-Redditor hornied, uh, hornied, our, non, <laughs> our non-Redditor horned dolphin porpoise-like creature spawning down in the bottom right in the brushed red, as Red Mage would say, and the chef. Our current prince in waiting after dethroning Hammy in the last game down in the bottom left. And our brushed blue. Then bl brushed blue you actually do say. So it's a ZVZ. And ZVZ is so friggin' bizarre, man. I don't think anyone's got it completely figured out. I don't, you know, I don't care. Slush, Idra, and no matter who you can think of, no Zerg, I think, has got this matchup completely figured out. And it's probably going to be a long time before we see anyone who completely figures it out. So You're absolutely right about that. AC. No, you're good, buddy. You're good. I know you. It's not, nothing wrong with that. If anytime I make a comment, and I hear you typing. I'm usually just gonna jump right back in with more inane commentary that I hope people don't question <laughs> and that I hope people buy into. Spawn, <laughs> That's right. Spawning pull down now for Deshef. Uh, going down at a somewhat normal time. And interesting enough, though, he got the extractor up first. That's not um, super duper common. It's not uncommon either, so to speak. But it's not super duper common. Looks like Narwhal may have done the exact same thing actually. So uh, both of them arcing towards very very fast Zerg speed narwhal a little bit ahead in the gas war right now uh, be playing the Saudi Arabia in the, uh, uh, to this point to to uh, the chef's Canadian oil pipeline so but um yeah <laughs> ZVZ here on uh, Shakura's Plateau and Shakura's Plateau the architecture of the map makes ZVZ so fun it makes it so taking an expansion as, as risky as that is at any point in a ZVZ is actually a little bit more viable it's a lot easier to defend you can literally use a queen and one or two spine crawlers or banelings to block your ramp and um, it turns into you can actually see Zergs get a chance to turtle against each other so always fun times here on Shakura's Plateau oh yeah always kind of really great things here you know because you normally you know I um you know, the ZVZ turns into just a giant slap fight, like a giant episode of Jerry Springer. Just everybody going in, you know, slapping each other, and then weaves are getting pulled out. Right, And right. Uh, you just have no idea what's going on until until one army breaks off, until Steve the Bouncer pulls everybody apart. Right. Um, you just don't know who wins. But, yeah, it looks like we're going to see an expansion here. You normally say that the person who expands first is the one that loses, so we're going to see Usually. if that's... Yeah, that's going to be uh, the chef here. Well, I'm, um, I, I should rephrase that, actually. It's the person who expands behind the attack instead of waiting for the outcome of the attack, in my experience, usually comes out on the losing side of things. But really, right now, uh, the chef is already favoring the Baneling Nest, while Narwhal, he's behind in the Zergling speed, but he's ahead in terms of upgrades. He's got the, the melee attack level 1 about halfway done at this point. So really, it's all going to come down to how well he can deal with this initial Zergling pressure. And look at Narwhal. This is what I'm talking about, the architecture of the map. He's created a wall in here with his Zerglings. And he's going to be able to favor that until the Banelings pop up. The Baneling Nest just about uh, two-thirds of the way done now for the Chef. So, uh, But the Chef definitely jumping out to a lead. And really, Narwhal's entire matchup here is going to be hitting his timing with the speed and with the plus one. But if he doesn't get there in time before the Zerglings, or excuse me, the Banelings get into too high a count, we immediately see two Banelings in production as soon as the Baneling Nest completes. And it uh, looks like, no, no Banelings back at home, or excuse me, back at the, um, the in the shadow of the ramp of the expansion there uh, for, for Narwhal. But um, Narwhal going to try and hit his timing. He's got, yep, right on top of each other, the speed and the, uh, the plus one finish. Now he wants to try and get a little bit more active on the map. The Roach Warren immediately down for Narwhal, plus ten Zerglings. Uh, but I think he's going to be a little bit surprised to get over here and see just how far along his opponent is with the Banelings and with the second hatch already up and mining. Oh, yeah, and it is ridiculously hard to tell which one is which when you're looking at the mini-map to see where who's going where. 
when there's such the, the, the light colors there. But yeah, now we're seeing Narwhal is going to move in a little bit. See what the defenses are for the Chef. And he wastes a Baneling on uh, that one. That is huge. Zergling. That is so huge given the, the high count of Zerglings here for Narwhal. Narwhal going to lose a lot of Zerglings there on the ramp, but he doesn't care. They're in such a high number, and they've got the upgrade, so they're going to win the slap fight without even trying. Going to rush directly and start going to work on the drones and the queens. And now is where the confusion sets in. Wow, gets one queen without even trying. Now he's going to try and circle around. Gets the Baneling nest. I love this call here by Narwhal. One Baneling coming in. He needs to waste one Zergling on that Baneling and just let that be that Baneling's, or that, that Zergling's little job. Uh, right now trying to bait him, but he's losing a lot of time and giving the chef time to respond. Loses way too many Zerglings there. Loses five, and all of a sudden this Zergling count has gotten a lot lower. Doesn't look nearly as scary. Another Baneling chasing them around. I'm going to try and just keep darting around. It looks like keep his opponent off guard, not really being active and attacking anything. Uh, but Deshef is just being given so... Oh, no, there goes about half of what was rem the remaining Zerglings for Narwhal. Narwhal going to be way far behind. His second hatch uh, just about to complete, but he's way behind. His opponent did not do nearly enough damage with that attack. He's already up the Roaches, which is a good step, uh, but economically, he's not going to be able to attack for a while, and Deshef is just going to have time to drone. Oh, yeah, he's going to have plenty of time to drone up. He's going to roll those uh, Zergling over right now, see what he can do about uh, just completely uh, taking out these the four Roaches. Now six. Seven roaches now. Now he's gonna make the the epic wall again with those roaches. Put them in the hold the the hold mode, and uh, and just keep that wall up. That is a great little uh, idea. I never even thought to do that with uh, with zergling there to kind of create your own wall. That's that's actually kind of right. brilliant. Yeah, ZVZ is about the only match zergs can actually wall off against an opponent, but. Um, yeah, but this is the point. You know, like if you look at the production tab, seven drones in production now uh, for Deshef. He knows he can't. His opponent's not going to be able to push him for a while. And if we go to the income tab, we're going to be able to see. Wow, the economically just monstrous for Deshef right now. Thirty-eight to the twenty-four of Narwhal, and uh, Narwhal's going to have to do something pretty, pretty soon. He can't just sit back in two base and uh, and try and race his opponent in any way, be it to upgrades or be it to tech. Uh, Deshef, if, so long as Deshef is on top of that and has a general idea of what his opponent's up to, he should be able to stay ahead um, as we arc into the mid game here. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right about that, and. Um you know what? What's what's going to benefit him right now is he's got those upgrades going right now. We see layer tech going in right now for Narwhal and for uh, and, and for Chef. So they're they're both trying to get up. The, they're both trying to get their comeuppance. Uh, I guess it is it's not really what I would say, but they're both they're both trying to they're both trying to do it like like an arms race. I guess is right. probably the best way. You know, now now they've kind of started an arms race. It's it's escalation. You know, and that that's really what ZVZ really is 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 how far can you take it? You know, he he builds he builds a better zergling. You build a better banley. He, he right. builds you know more roaches. You got to go to you know mutilus or something right. else. You know, and it's just it it's absolutely ridiculous. Pretty pretty quickly, or it can. Uh, it, it tells somebody just you know somebody hits that ceiling and uh, really it's just you don't want to throw your opponent into that ceiling as quickly as possible because they're going to have to get there really really fast or uh, you have to beat them to the ceiling and manage your time and units uh, effectively enough where you don't fall behind. Oh no, wonderfully said my friend and you're exactly right. The most dangerous part of any ZVZ outside of the initial Zergling rush, there's always a rush to speedlings. It just depends on how the player wants to approach that rush. But outside of that, the danger in ZVZ is always the tech switch. Uh, whenever you decide to stop producing Zerglings and instead produce Roaches, the problem with that is that as you're just getting out your first round of roaches, if you have, say, five roaches and they're in the middle of the field, they get mauled to death by zerglings. Then if you, like you said, if you go to mutilisks, if you have a low mutilisk count, only two or three that have just hatched and you've stopped producing roaches, then a gigantic roach army just runs in and snipes down your hatchery. So uh, the tech switching, always the most difficult part of any, any ZVZ. And now the infest infestation pit on the way uh, for Narwhal. That's a wonderful call. And the infestation pit really the key the key structure in just about every ZVZ uh, just because of the way that investors in small numbers can change any matchup oh great great yeah yeah that's uh, that's absolutely right there AC and uh, you know with you know and you and I have discussed that that uh, that an investor is probably the uh, keystone unit uh, for Zurich like oh, if you yeah. don't have it, you know there, there's no point in having it. So you know, uh, you, you've got to you've got to have that infested to really do something. Oh yeah, uh, you know some serious damage. You know, well, all, all as, in all, as he's you got move the up, going on too. As you move up into larger numbers, as you move up into larger armies, and then not just in ZVZ but ZVP and ZVT. 
Um, the, the Infester becomes the choice way to manage large groups of units. Um, because there's nothing that a Protoss or even a uh, or a Terran can do, no matter the, no matter what their composition is, be it Bio or Mech, be it Colossus Death Ball or even Dark Templar, everything is countered by Fungal Growth. And the larger those armies get, the more potent Fungal Growth becomes. And uh, it, it was really the buffing of the of the Infester um, that has changed the way that Z that Zergs match up against every other race, and especially against um, other Zergs as well. So. And right now we see that a, a pretty high roach count being favored by both players. The chef up to a very large roach count, um, up to oh wow, closing in on 40 roaches at this point. Looks like he's going to try to hit a timing to get out and hit uh, the hit narwhal maybe in the middle of a tech switch. And we can see narwhal is going to be caught a little bit. Three infestors just now finishing the burrow, almost done. And the pathogen glands were finished, so narwhal's really going to have to use these infestors to be able to to manage this gigantic roach army uh, by the chef. The chef is expanding behind this attack though, so. And so long as he's not stupid, if he doesn't throw away this entire army in this attack, he's still going to be able to maintain quite a considerable lead over Narwhal, even if this attack is uh, turned away initially. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Narwhal doing a great job there. He was going for his third. He canceled it. You know, seeing that that, that pressure was coming, he wanted to make sure he wasn't going to fall behind. Now he's dropping it down again now that he sees that it's pulling back a little bit more. You know, and I do like the fact that the, that the chef did not pull all the way back to his base. He just kind of moved to the southern Zonaga Tower, just trying to uh, make sure he still has map presence. He does have a lot of vision going on right now. And, uh, you know, that, and that's kind of the thing with uh, with the ZVZ, is that, you know, with uh, just overlords hanging around absolutely everywhere, right. there should be, like, really no fog of war. Yeah. In that, that's, usually, that's usually until about the 20 minute mark, or unless there's a very fast hydralisk bin or something like that, you're right. There basically is no fog of war in a ZVZ. Wonderful observation there, Red Mage. Uh, but now the infestors have been and tacked on by the, the chef as well. Uh, his lead continues to grow up to 163 supply to Narwhal's 150. Narwhal not terribly far behind, uh, but he is 14, 15 harvesters down, uh, 63 to 49 right now. Um, so he is behind economically, but in terms of army count and in terms of what he's doing with his supply and his tech, he's hanging in, hanging in about as, as well as he can, given that uh, things did not favor him. In fact, he's going to counterattack now. Speedling's going to rush into this third, going to get a good surround on the queen, and now going to start trying to go to work on the drone's going to try and pull the drone count a little closer to even. The drone's all being pulled away as the roaches are brought out to try and deal with this. These zerglings probably, yeah, not going to be able to do any real damage to the armored uh, armored little roaches there, but uh, you know, doing what he can, and I like that out of Narwhal. He has to know he's behind. He's not very far behind, but he is behind. He has to use little tactics like that to try and draw things even. And it looks like we may have an engagement here in the middle of the map, Red Mage. Both uh, packs of roaches and infestors gathering here in the center. Good fungal growth going to catch. Uh, wow, caught a lot of roaches there, actually. Caught nine of them with that with that fungal growth, so quite effective. Now he's going to move back out. He does not have an overseer. Oh, and he's just going to go ahead and fungal growth right on top of things. Oh, wow, look at the fungal growth going off on both sides. So much damage being done to these roaches. Fungal wars and roach wars here at the IG. King of the Hill number 12. The roach count for the chef staying very, very high, but Narwhal hanging in as well as he can. His infestors actually have gotten off much better fungal growth, and it looks like I can't call it. I don't know who's going to win. Looks like Narwhal may be going to come out on top. Uh, yeah, actually going to chase the remaining infestors here of the chef back across the map. Uh, but the, the supply actually much higher for the chef right now. Oh yeah, much higher for the chef right now. You know, he's got. He, he went ahead and, and did a triple expand. Took one match, uh, macro hatch and two more expansions just to make sure he could he could refill those ranks very very quickly. We see him getting the ultra list den as well, so he's definitely uh, you know uh, looking to uh, put some major hurt on narwhal right here. He's looking to snap that little unicorn uh, horn right off right off the head there with that giant uh, clipper claws there of the ultra list. Absolutely, and uh, yeah. This is going to be absolutely brutal here. Very smart move here, adding in all those macro hatches just to refresh that army. And we see Narwhal pulling, uh, pushing out yet again, coming right in for everything. Those infestors a little farther behind now, so not going to be able to fungal growth right off the bat. Well, there go the fungal growths on both sides. Giant green, gun, green uh, pustules <laughs> everywhere on the map. And it uh, looks like that that very ill-advised attack by Narwhal there lost every single one of his roaches. I don't think he, he knew that Deshev could replenish quite as quickly and maybe put a little bit too much faith in the roach upgrades, expecting that to carry him to a much better outcome. Uh, but yeah, that might actually turn out to be the key moment in the matchup here, Red Mage. He just threw away 
so much supply, and he is now trailing in tech and in workers. Uh, so four ultralisks on top of the roaches that are already down uh, for Deshef, I think is going to turn out to be way too much uh, for Narwhal to really deal with. Oh, yeah, Narwhal, unfortunately, is running so short on uh, on gas right now. I don't know if he's because he didn't right. put a, enough extractors down, but he was just so far behind in gas, he's not going to be able to keep up with, with the production that he's going to need to in order to combat what he's doing. He is going to try to do a little bit of a burrow roach thing, I, I be, probably because I haven't seen an, uh, an overseer uh, wow. anywhere. So that's uh, that's pretty smart that, uh, that neither side has really taken... Uh, overseers, and he's going to run right back in through here. Either going to get himself a good scout, or he's going to, uh, or he's going to try to pop himself up into this third, uh, or the 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 natural of the. Oh, upper. there he so goes. He's going to pop him. Well, he, yeah. So uh, yeah, not sure what he was thinking there. He's got a few of them above. Oh, look at the fungal growth. It's going to lock all these units down and expose them. And Narwhal just leaves. <laughs> Says, I've had enough, man. The chef advances to what's going to be our final game here at the IG King of the Hill number twelve. Brought to you by its Gosu.com. You're absolutely right about that, AC. My goodness, what a good game there. You know, a, a ZVZ that, that carried to a mid and was going into a late game. Absolutely phenomenal play there by both of our competitors. Uh, my goodness, I have, we have not seen a ZVZ that awesome in quite a long time. Back and forth, back and forth, but unfortunately uh, that, that ended the way that it did. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, on both sides, Narwhal did a fantastic job there, trying to trying to bleed in there, and uh, but unfortunately, right. uh, yeah, that was a great ultralist, you know, uh, back up there, and oh man, so good, so so blown away by that, but yeah, absolutely phenomenal there. We want to thank everybody again for watching us live, watching the vods, coming out and hanging out with us in the Let's Go Through chat on uh, Battle.net as well as the uh, the Justin TV chat here on TwitchTV.com. Uh, always a lot of fun to hang out with everybody, and we definitely appreciate everybody uh, hitting the follow button there because that's what helps us get our sponsors, oh, yeah. increases our prize pools, and really makes AC and I look really, really good that people don't like it, that, that, uh, so people know that they don't hate us. Oh, exactly. On, on, on. Yeah, speaking of, guys, in the next week or two, we're going to have the announcement of our 2011 Summer Tournament Series, and uh, you guys are going to be blown away. I I'm not going to lie. The, the the number of events is going to be somewhat similar. The structure is going to be very similar. Some uh, very unique changes um, that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing a uh, four. Uh, we're going to be doing four alpha, beta, and omegas uh, each and every month instead of the three alpha and betas that we do now. But we're going to be splitting them up. Two are going to be at six p or seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and probably two are going to be around nine or nine uh, nine thirty Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be more accommodating for our West Coast viewership, as well as maybe even those in Europe. But uh, speaking of Europe, we're going to be trying to get uh, to get tacked on some European Open Cups as well. So we're going to be doing EU events, and we're going to have uh, the King of the Hills. The prize pools are going to increase. So uh, each and every one of you hanging out right now, you think the action's fun now. Just wait until we get a chance to announce the, the new and new and improved prize pools for the King of the Hill events we're going to be doing. And we're reading. You're in absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, like so no, you're good, yeah. buddy. I'm reading in the uh, reading in the chat here. Looks like we got a, a new guy, Templar Rage, uh, ZBZ. Okay, Templar Rage. I'm gonna guess that's Narwhal. Said he played like shit, and I don't think he did. But I'm gonna guess that's Narwhal just because that tends to be how he talks. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So uh, thanks so much, guys. Hanging out. We're gonna have more Magic the Gathering cards to give away tomorrow. By the way, so. All you magic fans are like, hey, where are your cards, Red Mage? Hey, hey, Red Mage. Hey, Red Mage. Hey, hey, AC. Hey, hey, won't you give? Yeah. All that fun stuff. But, oh, long shot, 1056. Don't know that I know him very well. But uh, welcome to the chat, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you in with us. So who we got coming up next? We're going to have the chef playing against who, my friend? Uh, VG Dave. Uh, he's in the middle of another tournament right now. He's trying to see if, if, if he has a break to come in uh, to us, or he may have to, to forfeit, unfortunately. So uh, I'm, I'm just messaging him right now and trying to get back a response. So as soon as I, I get one in there, my friend, I will let you know. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, there's mumbles alive. I shall drink your blood and eat your children. It's fine. And <laughs> it's, it'll be okay. It's fine. I don't really care. It's fine. But, um, but anyway... <laughs> but uh, uh, VG Day, by the way, is Devasion. Uh, for those who hang out in the chat and know our little community, uh, Devasion is VG Dave. So hopefully we can get him involved as well. What, what other event is he in? We need to know these things. I need to know who we're competing with. I have no idea. I, I was going to ask him that once he once he got out. Um, whoops! If I can. Well, we got we've got him on the clock. Like we got him on the clock. You know, we we'll say that uh, the, the clock started at about nine fifty. So we'll give him another eight minutes after that. 
uh, we'll just have to go ahead and declare the chef our champion for the evening, and uh, and we'll see what's going on. But yeah, guys, so far as what's going on with the stream, we're going to have the brand new 2011 Summer Tournament Series announced. We're gonna, actually going to be getting our League of Legends team streaming as well. Um, don't know that they're going to be streaming on this exact stream. We may set them up on their own independent stream over at, at, um, over at Owned. Uh, own dot uh, TV or whatever whatever the uh, address is. Apparently that's the League of Legends hub. But one way or the other, we're going to have League of Le Legends action on the way. And by the way, since we happen to have a gigantic number of people who are signed up for itsgosu.com as members, but are really not using all the aspects of the website, I encourage you head over there, uh, sign in and hit dash or you know, go to your dashboard. People, I don't think, have really realized that we're basically an eSports Facebook. Like, really and truly. You can upload photos, and we store them for you, and you have photo albums. We have a built-in blogging feature. We have active forums. So if you, ha if you haven't done that yet, and I'll be honest, I've been with its GoSu for a number of months now, and I'm just now beginning to tap in to the potential of exactly what uh, the team at Max Integration and Mr. Mini-Me have put together. So, yeah, if you're new to, to its GoSu, go make an account. That way you can sign up for all of our events. And by the way, if you want to organize a tournament just for your friends or what have you, uh, don't forget you can you can post those tournaments and use our our automated sign-up and check-in system for free. All you have to do is be a member of its GoSu. So a lot of stuff offered by its GoSu.com. And I was told, give me a fung. Oh, all right, I got you. I got you. Hammy says, check your SC chat. I just did so. And uh, next time you use it, Hammy, you'll get that. I absolutely promise. If not, I'll give you one by the end of the night. So, Fungal. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, VG Dave is not going to be able to make it. All unfortunately, right. his opponent in the other tournament is kind of not letting him take a moment out to uh, to do the cost. So, right, right. Uh, so he is going to unfortunately have to forfeit. So Division, unfortunately, is not going to be able to make it. So that is going to make the chef uh, our, uh, our new champion. Alrighty, the chef. Congratulations to you, my friend. And uh, <laughs> Hammy asks, "Can he get a fungi? Just like the old plague <laughs> from the uh, the old Korean cast?" It's like, "Oh, the plague No, it's a fungi. But uh, congratulations there to the chefs coming in at the end there and tearing through the latter part of the, of the IG King of the Hill number 12 brought to you by itsgosu.com. Do our little goodbyes. It's been a wonderful Father's Day with you. Sorry we had so many issues, guys. There were some issues with Justin TV, issues with my audio, and of course issues with me enjoying dinner with my father entirely too much, putting me behind schedule. But tonight, you've heard music in the background. What you're hearing right now is Ronald Jinkies and before that, Mockiness Supremacy. So check them out at Ronald Jinkies and MockinessSupremacy.com. All of this has been brought to you by our wonderful sponsors, Still Series Cyberground, Max Integration, and San Yamabushi Jujutsu in combination Goju Ryu School of Self Defense. You can find them at San Yamabushi Goju.com. And on this Father's Day, once again, left my door open. Now my cat is harassing me once again. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys could actually hear him. <laughs> yeah, my, my cats are, are pounding on the door as well. So, right. yes, uh, no, we, have, we will not go back to JR's Bat Cave. Aww. <laughs> we'd have. We'd have we, uh, I will. Uh, I will. I will try to do something. Turn on my phone to be part of the stream. Yes, uh, we will. We will try to do something cool with Jared's Bat Cave again at, at some point. Remember, Absolutely. like like I said, you know, you saw the you saw the pictures that I had. That's all fan art that, that people have made that I have I have purchased. Um, so yeah, if you if you want if you have like cool fan art, definitely put it on the site. And if you know if you have a Deviant Art account, oh yeah. Um, uh, let me know because I I love purchasing fan art. I love art from not just StarCraft Two, but for just about any old video game. Uh, in there, I'm I'm a huge huge nerd fan. So as you can tell by the amount of stuff in my room, and uh, most of it's not even out of the boxes yet. That's the stuff that I just had up there. So I want to thank everybody for coming into my room. With the, it's a complete and total slobby mess. But I hope you all enjoyed. Hey, that. you're a AC, nerd. It's gotta be that way, man. It's gotta be that way. And uh, AC, it was great. It was great to talk to you today, buddy, man. Oh, yeah. I uh, hope uh, hopefully Papa AC uh, had a good day. Oh, he did. We took care of him. And it depends on who you're talking about. If you're talking about my dad or if you're talking about me. Because, and again, don't you? I, I love everybody. <laughs> like, it seems, you know, people, everyone knows mothers like mine. Where they do cute stuff like get you a card and leave it out. And it's got like a little paw print drawn on it. And it says it's from my cat Pixel. You know, stuff like that. So, but the happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Or all you sons. You better damn well call your pop if you haven't already. Do what you can, and um, but yeah, Red Mage. I think we're about ready to get the hell out of here, man. Absolutely, I think it's time for us to go out and play some games, man. We haven't we haven't tooled out in a little while, so you know, it might be nice to get uh, get some games in. All right, all right, guys. 
We'll see you soon. Don't forget, head to, head over to itscoasty.com. Sign up for all of our events, beta, alpha, and omegas. And, of course, our don't forget our live event coming up this weekend on Saturday. So tune in this Saturday. We'll be live on this stream, uh, streaming live from down at Cybergrounds. And we'll probably have us on cam there if we actually get things set up appropriately, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I'm hoping we'll be able to uh, bring the webcam and get it hooked up a little bit easier than we did last time. So, yeah. All right, guys. Hopefully we'll be on camera. We're out of here. Have a good night.